Okay. Good morning. This is mechanics, yes? For Aero and MEC students. I think the mechanical engineering students, they know me from Structures 1. Yes, we had a Structures 1. Okay, my name is Ruhol Amin Darize. You can call me Ru. And I am from Solid Mechanics Group. This is the third year I'm teaching this module. And based on the feedback I received during last two years, I improved it, specifically the post-lecture slides. And because uh, the structure students, they know my style of teaching. First, we introduce the main concepts because I believe the main concepts are the more important thing we have to learn. Because when you finish this module, after a few months, definitely you forget the formulation and mathematical things. Mathematical things are very important and you need to practice. But, trust me, I, have my, I got my second master in pure mathematics. If you understand the concepts for mathematical things, you need just to do practice and practice and practice. Yes? It's nothing more than playing with mathematical formulation. Then first we focus on the main concept and we derived all the equation and formulation we need from scratch based on the main definitions and concepts. In the exam, I never ask to drive any formula or equation. The reason I go through them, because it helps us to understand the concept better. After we introducing the concept and develop the formulation we need, we try to solve examples. Yes, because we are engineers and we understand things through examples and applications. Uh, sometimes, because I want to solve example during the lecture to make sure the concept is completely clear, I, not, I cannot cover all the examples or materials. I will upload some supplementary videos. When I put very important on the front of the supplementary videos, it means it's important for your exam. If it's optional, it's up to you if you want to solve more examples. But be careful, the nature of this module is completely different from Structures 1. Structures 1 was very smooth and easy. Yes, this one is very tough. And you have to practice a lot. And during last two years, I tried to provide as many as examples for you in terms of the supplementary videos, which I solved by myself, and also the coursework. I designed your coursework be multiple choice quizzes. And for each multiple choice quizzes, you have five practical quizzes with detailed solution. Yes, I collected from different books, yes? Then I think you have enough number of examples. Maybe you find it easy during First two, three weeks, you say, oh, I know this one, I know this. But after week three, it gets more difficult and difficult. And I'm here to help you. Don't feel shy at all. Please ask your question, even if you think it's a crazy or silly question. We are here to help each other. Yes? Interrupt me at any point that something is not clear. Okay, kinematics of particles, rectilinear motion. What do we mean by kinematics? What do we mean by particles? And rectilinear motion means your object moves on a straight line path, yes? There is no curvature at all. 
Okay, this is the two-day course outline for, and before the lectures, I usually update the night before. You can find the pre- and post-lecture slides, yes? Post-lecture slides are more than enough for your exam. If you follow them and tutorial question, I, you can easily get 80%. But for those who are interested, I put on each section of the, on the blackboard the textbook chapters as well. Okay, when we finish the first part, we will have five, ten minutes break, and then we carry on the lecture. Again, drop-in support session. Sometimes you have very difficult question, which we cannot answer it through the tutorials or lectures. Anyway, after the lectures, I'm usually available. And sometimes you have very easy question or question from calculus. If you want, please ask your student rep to contact me to arrange drop-in sessions, which are optional, yes? The exam is 80 percent. We will have five online quizzes, or maybe four. Depends if we can manage, how we can manage the time. And the lab. I'm not responsible about the lab at all. If you have any question about the labs, please contact Dr. Stephen Burley. I will put his email on the main page of the Black. First part of the lecture, we look at the particle, yes, motion. After that, we look at the rigid body. What's the difference between particle and rigid body, roughly? Particle is a point, yeah, volume is zero, but it has some mass, yes? It's a virtual object. In reality, you cannot have something with volume zero and mass m. This is idealized model. Yes, please. It's written, I think so. Yes, it's written. Yes. For the second part of the lecture, we look at rigid bodies. Then the volume of the object is important to us. Then, as I mentioned at the beginning, first we introduce concepts, then we drive the mathematical formulation we need, then we solve example. Dynamics. In the previous semester, we had aesthetics, yes? Both of them are nothing more than Newtonian second law, roughly, yes? Sigma f equal to ma. But in the structures one, your acceleration was zero, yes? Then you use this equation for equilibrium of force and similar thing for equilibrium of moment. This is what we call a statics. During this module, we have non-zero acceleration vector. We look at the movement of the object. But then first we start from kinematics. Kinematics means we study the movement of the object without caring about the source of movement, which are applied forces. Yes, this is what we call kinematics. Second part, we look at kinetics. We look at to analyze the, again the motion of the object, but now we consider the source of movement, which are applied forces. You have all these things in post lecture slides. Uh, okay, as I told you, sometimes, for example, you have the aeroplane, you have car, any object which the volume of your object is not important. You can simplify it to a single particle. 
with volume zero and mass M. This is very common in Newtonian mechanics. We replace these objects. For example, this is velocity vector. This is mass M. You can reduce it with a particle, the same mass and the same velocity vector. This is what we call the particle. Particle is an idealized model of a real object. Yes? Depends on how simplify, how much do you want to simplify your real model, how much accurate you want to be. You can go for the particle or rigid body or deformable body. Or okay. What we want to do with kinematics? We want to predict <coughs> the motion, yeah, the movement of the object. By predicting means we have all the current state information. For example, I know the position at this point. I know the velocity. And I know acceleration. These are the known values. Then the question is, how can I, using this available data, predict the next state, position, velocity, and acceleration? Yes, if I can predict the next state, it means I can predict the path of motion as well. Yes? This is what we want to do during this course, yes? To learn at least the basic concepts. And it's very important. It's very important. For example, if you want to do some nanomechanics simulation, you look at one atom or molecule, you have its current state, for example, the position, the velocity vector, the acceleration. And based on Newton's second law, which we will go through it later, you predict the next position and orientation of this molecular atom. Yes? Yes, please. Sorry? Pseudo? S U? I don't know, sorry. Definitely we use some equation, yes, and we develop those ones. We will go through it. But roughly here I want just to introduce the main concept, why it's important. This one was, a, for example, nanomechanics example in mechanical engineering or aerospace. If you want to control any engineering design movements, Yes, you have to be able to predict the path of motion, which means predicting the next state of your object based on the current state variables. And this is another example why. Then if you want to summarize, we want to predict the path of motion or the next state of the object at any state or any time. We know the current state, physical parameters, and we want to predict the next state at any specific time. Because if you can predict it, you can control it. Okay, this is why it's important and some main concepts. Now we know why we call it kinematics. We ignore the source of movement. Why we call it particle. It's a simplified model. And in today's lecture, we just look at rectilinear motion. It means the path of motion is a straight line. You don't have any curve. Yes? Curvature is zero. But to be able to develop the formula that we need, 
to apply to engineering examples, first we have to introduce some definitions. First of all, which you know from the calculus, is the position of the particle. By particle here I mean object volume zero, yes, mass m. We introduce it. For example, your particle A can be at A or A1 at time T1. This is your coordinate system X, Y. And in, in this lecture, we just look at two dimensional case studies. Whole case studies from beginning till end, just 2D. Next year in dynamics course, you will deal with three dimensional examples. Okay, you know from the calculus, I just go quickly through it. We use R. And this is a vector sign, yes? They put it. And this coordinate of A can be A and B. A, B. Then R can be represented like this, A, B. Another concept which we need is the magnitude of R. Magnitude of R, you can use absolute value operator, which we drop. The magnitude of any vector is vector or a scalar? A scalar. That's why I dropped the vector sign. These are the notation we will use through this course, and it's nothing more than A1, B1. Then the particle can move. This is passive motion. POM. To another point, A2 with different position. Yes? R2, for example. This is what we call the position, which is a vector. can be at A2, at time T2 greater than T1. This is the first definition, what we call position, which is a vector. Another one is displacement. Okay, this is your A1 at T1. This is your A2 at T2. This is R1. It's a vector. Okay, the displacement is nothing than subtraction. Yes, the difference between these two position vector. Your particle at time T1 is here. At time T2 is at point A2. With different coordinates, if you subtract the current position minus the initial position, this difference we call it displacement. Is a vector or is a scalar? Yes. Exactly, yes. Okay. Is a vector or subtraction of two vectors definitely is a vector. And you know from the calculus, if you want to draw it, this is delta R. This is the second definition. You can see how from the scratch we introduce concept, definition, then we come up with more complicated formula. Okay, this is displacement vector we have here. This is position R1, R2. 
Now distance traveled. Okay. You can see the path of motion, the red line, yes, is different from the displacement vector. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, we assume it's a motion. Later, through the formula, we can clearly say at time t1 is here, time t2 here. If you write a MATLAB code, it can plot for you. You can see here we assume any general. We develop the formulation for general case, arbitrary path of motion. Okay, you can see the displacement vector is different from the distance. We call it delta s that the object travels. Do you agree? Yes. But when these two values, first of all, this is a scalar. Yes? A scalar. This is vector. What I know, the magnitude of displacement vector is a scalar as well. Yes? But you can see the magnitude of your displacement vector and the distance traveled are different. Yes? For general two position. When do you accept these two values be approximately equal? No. Because, because even for rectilinear you have particle at A1 here, if it's the origin of my coordinate system. This is my R1. For, for some specific rectilinear, you are right, but not always, yes? But in general case, if these two positions get closer and closer to each other, do you agree? This is the position of particle at pi A1 at time T1. This is the position of particle at point A2 at T2. Do you agree the, lim the limit of delta R when A2 tends to A1 or equivalently T2 or equivalently delta T, which is T2 minus, tends to zero? This one would be my delta S. Do you agree? This is for general case, yes. Yes, definitely. You can define in different way. That's, that's completely fine. Okay. Then be careful. Distance, if the question asks about the distance, is something if the question about the displacement is something else. Vector is key. We will solve too many examples, don't worry, to make the concept clear. Now, definition number four, velocity. Yes? You have this position vector, this position vector, R1, R2, the difference, and distance travel, A1, A2. This is what we call velocity. When this is the definition of the velocity. Yes? And from the calculus, do you agree this is nothing more than the derivative? Yes? The derivative of this vector, dr. Sometimes for time derivative, for simplicity, we put dot. Yes? That means if you have one single dot, it means you have d over dt. If you have double dot, it means you have d over dt squared, two times time derivative. And can you tell me, we know the direction of displacement vector, yes? 
Do you agree the direction of displacement vector and velocity vector are the same? Are the same, exactly. Why? They're the same because velocity is the rate of change of displacement. You are changing your displacement. The velocity is just the rate at which you change this displacement. This is, this is great, but in, I, we can go for in easier way as well. This is a vector, yes? Yes. Delta t is positive or negative? Positive. Delta time in the Newtonian mechanic is always positive, yes? yes. In, in relativistic Einsteinian mechanics can be negative, but here it's always positive. If you divide some vector by a positive scalar, does it change the direction of vector? Just change the magnitude of the vector. Then vector by a positive scalar, definitely they have different direction. And how can we get from this one to this one? This is we call velocity vector. This is we dropped. This is the magnitude of velocity vector, which we call it speed, exactly. These are just names, you know, we have to use. Okay, from this one, if you take absolute value from both sides, the left hand side gives you V, which is V, this one. Then you have absolute value of delta R delta T. As I told you, the derivation, these things I never ask in the exam, yes? I can take absolute value inside. The absolute value of delta t is equal to? Because delta t is always positive, yes? Then I drop absolute values. Yes, what was this? Do you remember? When the delta t tends to zero. Yes, delta S, yes. Distance. Yes, exactly. Delta S. Then this is, we know from the calculus, is nothing more than dS over dt, S dot. That's why V is equal to S dot. Do you agree? Okay. Now, we know from the calculus, if delta t tends to zero, yes, when these two points closer, get closer and closer, do you agree that delta r be tangent to the curve? We know this one from calculus, yes? If these two points get closer and closer, here and here. Then get closer and closer means delta t tends to zero. We know from the calculus the difference of these two position vector would be tangent, yes? At the curve, yes? In fact, when delta t tends to zero, these two different points, a1 and a2, became a single point, yes? And at that point, the delta r is tangent to the, your curve, yes? Which is passive motion here. Do you remember it from calculus? Yes, no? But do you agree here? Do you agree the explanation? Okay. Then, with this condition, when delta t tends to zero, this one would be tangent to the curve, which is passive motion. Then, and we say these two are parallel. Yes, we agree. Then velocity is tangent to passive motion. 
Do you agree? At each point, your velocity is tangent to path of motion. For example, at time t1, your particle is here. This is your path of motion at t3. At each point, yes? And the direction of your velocity is towards the direction of motion. This is very, very, very important. Simple, but very important. We will use it many times, yes? Please remember this one. And we roughly proved it as well, yes? I cannot go through the calculus things. If you want, in dropping session, we can discuss it in more mathematical detail. Any question? Then this is the definition of velocity vector, which is nothing more than the first time derivative of position vector. And its direction is always tangent to the path of motion at each time or at each point. And the direction is direction of motion. The last definition is acceleration. This is your path of motion. And we agreed that at each point of path of motion, the velocity is tangent and its direction is direction of the motion. Then this is my V1 at T1, point A1. And this is my V2 at T2. No, this is the definition of the acceleration. The delta V over delta T when time tends to the zero. This is the definition. Okay. Delta V is nothing more than V2, the velocity vector as position two minus V1. Yes? To be able to construct these two vectors, I have translated one of them, yes, to the origin of the other. Do you agree? If I translate a vector, yes, as long as I keep the direction and magnitude of the vector same, that's fine. We call it equivalent. You can find the pre precise definition in the post-lecture slides. Then to be able to subtract them, I just translate one of them to the origin of the other one, V2. This is the difference of the two vectors. You can see it's not anymore tangent to the path of motion. It has arbitrary direction. Then for acceleration, we cannot say what's the direction of acceleration. Arbitrary direction. And do you agree that acceleration vector and delta V vector, they have both the same direction? Because here you just divide a vector by a positive scalar. Yes, again, the same reasoning. And to drive this one, which is the scalar form, this is vector form, you have to apply absolute value operator, exactly the same procedure I did for velocity in the previous slide. I just ignore it. You can find the details in post-lecture slide, yes? Exactly the same procedure. Now, if I want to summarize, from the definition we came up with this one, a speed is nothing more than the first time derivative of distance traveled, or in vector form, velocity is nothing more than the first derivative of position vector. And do you agree, this is this one, if you plot the distance travel versus time, this is nothing more than the slope of your curve, yes? Then the slope of the distance time curve gives you velocity, 
the slope of this one gives you acceleration. Again, for acceleration in a scalar form, V dot as well, you can call it. And in vector form, you have this. Then this is a good checkpoint. If you calculate the acceleration and velocity, check whether this one is a first time derivative of the other or not. Okay. There is one simple example here. You can go through it. There is nothing. Now we start developing the formula, which you are familiar from GCSEA level, yes, your high school. V, the first time derivative of velocity was my acceleration. Yes? Do you agree? If this is my acceleration time curve, if I rearrange this one, Then I apply an integration on both sides, dv, a dt, t1, t2, v1, v2. This is v2 minus v1, yes? Which is change of speed, yes? You can write in vector form as well for the velocity, the same thing. Do you agree? And in calculus, what's this one? Do you agree this is nothing more than the area under the curve? Yeah. Yes, please. It's an area under the curve. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Then this is nothing more than this area, the area under the curve between these two time steps. Yes? That's why we written change in velocity is nothing more than the area under the curve of AT. Do you agree? And be careful, this is delta V, not V. Change in velocity. Yes? These are precise definitions. Similarly, you can prove it for And you know why dv is equal to v2 minus v1, yes, from calculus, yes? In calculus, we had something, it's called fundamental theorem of calculus. df between a and b equals to fa. Sorry, FB minus F. If I apply it to this one, DV minus between V1 and V2, it's V2 minus V1. Okay, you can check it similarly for the distance and velocity, yes? You can find in post-lecture slide, I don't go through. Now, for rectilinear motion, we want to drive the formula. The real lecture starts from now, which is the application. Again. I will not ask you to drive the equations in the exam. Okay, first of all, we look at constant acceleration problem. When we covered constant acceleration problem, later at the end of the lecture, we look at the non-constant ones as well. Okay, you agree this is nothing more than, it comes directly from the definition of the, Acceleration vector, 
which this one is the scalar form of that definition, yes? If I rearrange it and apply integration between T naught and T, arbitrary time, initial time and arbitrary time, apply on both sides, A D T T naught equals to D V. For simplicity, because in most of the problem we are dealing with, initial time is zero, yes? For simplicity, I, we just assume it's zero. You can keep it. It doesn't make any difference. But because in most of the problem, our initial time is zero. Okay. Now, can I take out acceleration? Can I take it out from integration? Why? Because we look at constant acceleration. You have to be very careful. If it's not constant, we are not allowed. Then we take it out, 0, t, dt. This is v2 minus v1. This is a. Then v equals to v plus a. This is the first formula that later we will use for different example. But be careful. First thing you, can, you, you must check before you apply this formula to make sure your example is constant acceleration or not. If it's constant, you can use this formula. If it's not, we have to follow different procedure. We will see at the end of lecture. Any question? This is velocity as a function of time and acceleration. Velocity is given as a function of time and acceleration. The second formula, the position as a function of time and acceleration. This comes directly from the definition of acceleration. Yes, we had in previous slides. This comes from the definition of the velocity vector in a scalar form, which is a speed, yes? Okay. From the previous slide, using this one, we developed V equals to V naught plus A T, yes? This is what we derived here. Yes? And because it's still I'm looking at constant acceleration, I am allowed to use it. Now if I rearrange this one, V D T equals to D S and take integration V D T. Initial time zero. Now I want to replace this velocity here, which I worked out in the previous system. Then the first integration would be V naught plus A T. This integration is nothing more than V naught T plus A T squared over T. This is then it gives me S equals to S naught, V naught C. This is position or travel distance as a function of time and acceleration. Yes? And initial velocity and initial position always given in your problem, must be given, yes? Because if you don't know the initial position of your object, how can you predict the next one? This is another useful, again be careful, this is only applicable to constant case. Similarly for 
velocity as a function of position and acceleration. Do you agree I, can I change the variable like this? Yes? Do you agree with this one? Okay. And can you tell me what was this? V. Perfect. Then I have E, A equals to V, D, V over D, S. If I rearrange and take integration, can I take acceleration out of integration? Yes, constant. Yes? If you want to rearrange it, you can rearrange it like this. Velocity as a function of position, current position, and acceleration. This is useful when you don't have information about the time. The last one. Okay. If I replace this one, from the first one, what I had, I had V equals to V naught plus AT. A can be written as V minus V naught over T. Then if you replace this one here, yes? What we will have, we will have V2, I take this one to the other side, V now. Two. And this one can be one, this one can be V plus V naught. Therefore, if I rearrange it, it would be S naught plus one over two. And this is the last one. Yes? Just two minutes, then we will have five, ten minutes break. Okay. Any question? Okay. First, we introduce the main concepts roughly, then definition, then develop all the formulation from the scratch. Do you agree? Now we want to use them through examples to make things completely clear. Okay, you have different formula for constant acceleration, rectilinear motion as well. Depends on which inputs are given in your problem, you can select the appropriate formulation. For example, if you have information about acceleration, velocity, initial one is given, and time, then you have acceleration, you have V, you have time. Yes? We can use this one. For example, here I have S, I have V, I have time, V not is over. Here it's useful when you don't have information about acceleration. You just know that acceleration is constant, yes? Free fall, yes? Free fall movement, yes? Then you drop down some object. The acceleration is constant, 
or variable. G, yes? G is constant, at least when you are close to the Earth's ground. If you are far away, this is another story. And similarly for the other, here for example we have S, we have acceleration, we don't have V, and these are Q. And here you have V, you have acceleration, you have S, you don't have time. Now, this is the example. Sorry, the colorful printer didn't work properly this morning. That's why it's black and white. It's not, it's, maybe it's not working. Okay, we will have 10 minutes break, and please have a look at this one through the break. After the break, we solve it together. How was the lecture? Clear? Boring or useful? How was the lecture? Clear? That's Lecture, okay. I don't know. I you can check. Any point to improve? Any points to improve? You have post lecture slides now on Blackboard. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, that's your right. This is the point I want to mention. This is the point of question. Yes. How is the lecture? Not boring, not clear, everything's clear. The derivations are not boring. Uh, you so find the them useful. I find the derivation easy, but just the first step I didn't get it well. Mm. Sorry for interrupting you. In this we have dv equal adt. So until this point, I got how we start the derivation as normal. But how can we? Make no, not v, dv. Okay, so. Oh no. no. Where, where did it come from? So, dv equal adt, yes. so v equal no. so it should be dv. dv, no, 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 integration of dv. Yeah. Because I applied... Sorry? You have to apply the same thing, and the, be careful, this one is this one, you are right. Yeah. Which you did. But here, you have boundaries. Time one and time two. This is different. This is V two minus. Oh yeah, but how can we make uh, the derivation from V two to V one? Okay. When you have this integration, A, B, T, how do you know which parameter 
dictates the boundary of uh, you look at the integration variable yeah d1 d2 and the other side you have dv yeah so it should be d1 d2. yeah always you look at the integration variable yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a good question i will mention it after the thing. yeah okay and s is for height right s s for the for height you not necessary height maybe you are moving horizontally yeah but i mean the distance yes can be vertical can be horizontal Is the lecture okay? Yes. Is the, are we taking it? Um, oh, what, what, what is the, um, the scale? It's not the scale, the directions. Coordinate system. This is the point. Very good, Paul. You got the point. Without coordinates, system, system. exactly. But if Both you have it at different times, like one's in negative time. Exactly. This is the point I want to mention. You got it. Yes. I just wanted to know. In this, is the negative going? Both. That's then. My question as well. That's my question. As this well. is the point yeah. I want to mention. I think it's if there is no actually. coordinate system, both of them are acceptable. It would be safe, but the problem is that like it's, it's negative if it's negative time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. Because look, because considering positive is being downward, it's two years. Yeah. yeah. See the part of the equation. We can. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You'll see one of the times it's like negative, one of them is positive. No, exactly. no, you got the point. You got yeah, the point. Yeah. How was the lecture? Uh, good. Not boring? Like stuff, so. Okay, yeah, you have to you wait for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go like this suddenly. <laughs> we did already projectile motion, remember, doing a 2D analysis with this, so we moved the camera. No, no. After week three. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, after week but I need your feedback. Please provide me with that. That makes sense. So the velocity here. I, I went with C. My initial thought was B. No, no, C. But then it's C because of the drive, because you solve the fourth equation. B squared equals B naught squared plus 2A. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. You that got the sense. point. That's okay, thanks. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Okay, first of all, we have this set of four equations. My question, can I use these equations for this example? What was the criteria? Constant acceleration. I think it's we know the Earth's gravity is constant when you are close enough to the yes, Earth's surface. Then my acceleration is constant. I can then which one is suitable for my purpose? I have initial velocity, yes. This one. Then I have V naught. I have initial height as well, yes. S naught. Do I have any information about the time? I have acceleration. It's A is equal G over 6. G is the gravitational acceleration. But I don't have any information about time. Do you agree? Then this can be applied. Yes, please. Uh, 9.8, it's fine enough for the exercise. But we use 9.81. Again, similar to a structure, those people who had a structures one with me in mechanical engineering physics, 
There is no unique approach. I may solve this example using this equation. You may want to solve it using the combination of the other two. Definitely there are more than one approach for most of problems. And the approach I follow is not necessarily the best one, yes? Okay, which answer is correct? First of all, for example, this initial velocity is given, two meter per second. Is positive or negative? Without coordinate system and sign convention, how can you say? Again, those students who had the structures when we did, I emphasized infinitely many times. In engineering, without stating what's the origin of your coordinate system and your sign convention, we cannot follow your solution procedure. And in the exam, you will lose mark. Yes? First state, I will put my origin of coordinate system on the ground. And positive direction, I assume, upward. Yes? You can assume your coordinate system is here, origin, initial position, and positive. It's completely up to you. But you must state clearly at the beginning of your solution. This is the origin of coordinate system. These are positive sign convention. Yes? Then we can follow. Okay, I will solve it, this example for you using this coordinate system. On Blackboard, I upload a supplementary video. I solve exactly the same example using different coordinate system as sign convention. It doesn't matter which coordinate system we use because we know the nature or the physical phenomena is independent of how we look at it, yes? First thing, importance of coordinate system. By coordinate system, where is the origin? Because based on that one, we can measure the distance or height. And sign convention. Based on sign convention, I can say acceleration is positive or negative, velocity is positive or negative. That's why, without stating a coordinate system, both answers can be correct. Any question? The second step, first step, coordinate system, sign conventions. Units. We are engineers. We are not mathematicians, yes? For mathematicians, numbers are numbers. Doesn't matter if it's temperature or length. Two is two. But we are, sorry again, this is a printer. But for engineering again, I expect you, you, are, you can choose whatever you want as units. But must be consistent. Yes? These are different consistent. For example, this is the SI, consistent unit for mass, time, energy. This is another consistent system of unit. Whatever you follow, Yes, make sure you use the consistent system of units. And the answer without units, again, you may lose mark. Now we want to solve this example together. Okay. I simplify my object. to a point. This is the origin of coordinate system I put on the earth surface. This is the sign convention for vertical. Yes? Can I use those equations, rectilinear motion equation? My motion is a straight line, rectilinear, yes? Rectilinear can be vertical, can be horizontal, can be with angle. As long as the path of motion is a straight, it means with zero curvature, you can apply rectilinear motion equation. Then inputs. 
Initial velocity. The magnitude is two units, don't forget unit, meter per second. The sign. Positive or negative? This is V naught, yes? We assume upward is positive. In this sign convention we chose, this is downward. It means negative or positive? Negative. A. The magnitude is 1 over 6 multiplied by 9.8 units. Is positive or negative? The acceleration is downward as well, yes? The Earth wants to attract the object, yes? Based on this sign, if you choose different sign convention, for example, you use downward, be positive, all the signs will be changed. Initial position. I know the magnitude 5, the unit is consistent with other parameters. Is positive or negative? This is the, <coughs> I apologize, this is the origin of my coordinate system. The initial position is above the origin or below? Above, based on this. Then is positive. The final position, because the question asks what's the velocity when the object impacts the Earth, yes? When the object impacts the Earth, what's the position? Based on this chosen coordinate system. Zero. And we know the direction of the velocity is downward. Yes? Then in this coordinate system, the final velocity would be minus. Now, as we discussed, one approach is to use this equation. If I replace all the values, V2 minus 2 plus 2 minus 0 8, 0 minus 5, then V equals 2. Don't forget the unit. Now, based on this sign convention, which answer is correct? Downward, we assume upward be positive. Any question? In the derivation of the formula, one of the students in the break time asked me this question. How do you know for this ADT, we have to place the boundaries with respect to time? For dv, we have to put v1, v2, yes? In general case, when you have f dx, for the boundary of the integral, always you look at the integration variable, yes? The integration of variable is the variable clarify the boundaries of your integration. Do you agree? Here the integration variable is dx then the boundary of integration is, can, must be written in terms of x. Here your integration variable is dv. Then you write the boundaries in terms of v. The integration variable here is dt. Yes? And another question they ask, they say this s means height or can be anything. As I told you, if it's vertical, it's height. If it's horizontal, it's horizontal distance. Can be inclined one as well. Can be this distance. As long as it's rectilinear, no curvature in the path of motion, S can be the distance traveled. 
Okay, any question? And check the blackboard and see how the same example I solved using different coordinate system. Then in the exam or whatever, I submitted exam paper yesterday and in all question I specified the coordinate system to make your job easier, yes? But if you face any question without any coordinate system, feel free to choose whatever you want. But you have to state clearly, this is the origin, this is the sign cover. Otherwise, we cannot follow your solution procedure. As I told you, for first two, three weeks, you may find it easy and you know before. But after week three, it gets more difficult, yes? And to be able to cover the next materials, we have to review and recap these things that you're already familiar with. Okay, when you have two mass, based on Newton's law of gravitation, these two mass, they want to attract each other, yes? You know this one from physics, yes? And the distance between the center of these two masses are this M wants to attract, M1 wants to attract M2 with F. Yes? Based on Newton third law, if M1 applies F to M2, action, there is a reaction. Yes? From M1 to M2 with the same magnitude but opposite direction. And F can be given M1, M2, R squared. This is some experimental constant. We know its value. Now, okay, if we replace this mass, yes, this particle by the Earth, yes? This is mass of Earth, and this is my particle with mass M. Its distance from the surface of the Earth is H. The radius of Earth is Re. Okay. Mass wants to attract particle M. Then it applied some F to it, yes? Based on Newton's universal, yes? Low gravity for gravitation. Do you agree? This is the direction of the F. But what we call this F? Weight. Weight of the particle. Do you agree? And we show it by Y? Mass by G. Mg. Do you agree? This is nothing more than weight of the particle. But this is action. Action from Me applies to M. Based on Newton's third law. Yes, please. Exactly. But with opposite direction. Same magnitude. Yeah. Now, if I use this equation again, my F, here is the weight, mg, equals to g, m, m, e. What's the distance between these 
particle and center of Earth is H plus Re, yes? This 2m can be canceled. Then g is equal to g m e r e plus h. Can you tell me g is a constant or variable? Constant. Mass of Earth? Constant. Radius? of the Earth comes. H, variable. Then, the G, which later we call it gravitational acceleration, is a function of H. It means H is the distance from surface of the Earth. Do you agree? Yes, please. Okay, after the lecture we can talk about it. Oh, maybe not today, but because today I have a meeting immediately after the lecture. But maybe tutorial or next we, we can discuss about it. Because later, I don't go through it in the energy. There is called the potential. For any conservation, in physics, everything must be consistent, yes? For any conservative force, you can assign a potential to it. And potential is the first derivative with respect to R. We, we will go through it. There is, there is a clear explanation behind it. But you know, later, this is not related to your course. Later. This is the, how Newton explained gravity. Later, Einstein, Newton says the gravity is due to the attraction of the mass. Einstein came with general relativity, not a special general. It took about 10 or 13 days, sorry, years, 13, for him to develop the formulation. He says, Newton says gravity is due to attraction of mass. If you have some mass, I feel attraction. Okay, but Einstein says no, gravity is not due to mass. It's due to the curvature of space and time. More accurate one, you know? They, they, this kind of question you sometimes you ask, seems very simple, but there are a lot of philosophical issues behind it. You are completely right, you can say this one cannot describe. Uh, I don't want to go through the detail, but in, if, you, if I suggest attend the special and general relativity in the School of Physics, uh, then you will see this law of gravitation, as you mentioned, they cannot predict the orbit of some planet. Very easily they calculate, they see, oh, there is 30 degree difference every few years. And they check it with Einstein relativity, they see, oh, it's more accurate. That's why your question is a very good question. Yes. Sorry for taking the time. <laughs> okay, then this one. Now, when the object with mass m is close, to the Earth's surface, yes? You agree, H is nearly zero. We can guess. If I ignore it here, H zero, then this one can be simplified to G, G H equal to zero. We can call it G naught. This zero means H zero. Equals to G m e over r e squared. We can put this. And if you calculate it, it gives you, if you, I put all these constant in your lecture notes, lecture slot, post lecture slides, you come up with this value. 
This is the constant values. What for the, we use this one, 9.81 or 9.8. These two are more than enough if you use metric. For other units, you have different values for G. Okay. You can find more details in the post lecture slide. See, I put all the constant you need to calculate the mass of Earth and the radius of the Earth. But you have to convert these units all to metric. This is kilometer. Be careful. Now, free fall, as we mentioned, free fall can be considered as a, if the, okay, in general, we said F is a function of H, yes? This is what we concluded at the beginning, yes? It means your acceleration is not constant. It means we cannot use those formulation we develop. The problem is particle, kinematics, rectilinear, but not constant. But we say, okay, all of the problem we consider through this course, or most of them, maybe we find some few. Yes. We assume the object is close enough to the Earth. Then G, which is G H equals to zero, is constant. Then we can apply those constant acceleration formula we developed, yes, in the first part of the lecture. Do you agree? G is 9.8. Is positive or negative? When you want to replace in the formula. Without sign convention, both of them are possible, yes? First tell me what's your sign convention, then I tell you it's positive or negative. Okay, we solve this example together. Okay, first step, origin of coordinate system to be able to measure distance or height, yes? I assume origin of my coordinate system be here, O. I strongly suggest solve this problem using different score. For, I assume upward be positive. Try to solve it using, for example, put coordinate system origin here and assume downward be positive. We don't have time to solve it for you, but please try to solve this example using different coordinate system. Yes? To feel confident. The physics is independent of how we look at it. Okay, I use this one. And Initial position of the particle, S naught, is given 20 meter. The second step was units. Whatever you want to use for units, just make sure they are consistent. Is positive or negative? Based on this coordinate system and sign convention, S naught is above, yes? In the positive sign of my coordinate system. Do you agree? It's positive. Initial velocity is upward. It goes like this. This is your passive motion. First goes up, then down. Then V naught is positive or negative. The magnitude is 10, unit is positive, based on this sign convention. Okay, my input, V naught plus 10 meter per second, S naught plus 20 meter per second. 
A, I know is here I have just, it's a free fall problem. In free fall problem, we have just the only force which applies on your object is mg, yes? Sigma f equal to mg, and we know sigma f is equal to ma, yes? A is equal to g. The magnitude is 9.81, the unit is m per But the sign, positive or negative? It's downward or upward? Downward, yes? Based on this sign convention, we assume upward be positive, yes? Then this is negative. Do you agree? Now we start you can directly apply those formulation. I solve it for you through two different approach. First, I follow the initial definition, yes. The second approach, I use those formulation. Both of them are acceptable, yes. Okay, part A. Approach one, I want to follow the initial definition, which is this one. This is approach one. Acceleration is this problem here is 9.8. If I rearrange it, I will have dv equal to minus 9.81 dt. Then I will have V minus 10 equals, because V not, the initial velocity is positive 10. V is a function of time. You can see it clearly. This is following, this is approach one. You can follow the initial definition. Or you can say directly, I want to use I want to use directly this formula. I replace the input values, yes? If you do that, V is equal to V naught is given plus 10, A is minus T. And your V is function of time, you can see. Yes? Then you have two options, using the formula directly or follow the initial definition. Any question? If you plot it, The question didn't ask for plot. We do it extra to see. In this region, the velocity is positive, yes? Because it goes upward, upward, upward. At some point, it stops, means V equal to zero. Then velocity be negative, downward, after this point. You see it's consistent with your observation. Your mathematical calculations are consistent with what you observe. At this point, you have velocity equal to zero. This is the point that the sign of velocity changed. Do you agree this is the maximum height? Then the condition for the maximum height is Vertical velocity be zero. 
because later we have projectile for that one vertical velocity, because horizontal can be non-zero, yes? Then if in the exam, if you see, which we have a question, maximum height, you need just to put vertical, be careful, vertical velocity, yes? What was the slope of VT? dV over dt is the slope of this curve. Acceleration. What's my acceleration here? Minus 9.81. It's minus, decreasing. If this is alpha, and it's a constant acceleration, it's a line. Yes? You see everything is consistent. Can you calculate this alpha for me? Because the slope is nothing more than tangent alpha, yes? From this one, what I have here, alpha is approximately minus 84. Any question? Part B. Again, you can have you can follow the initial definition, dy over t was. I replace s by y. This, these are just letters, because when you deal with vertical, y is more common. You can keep it s or any parameter. That's completely fine. And this one from the first step, part A, we know, was if you take integration, What was the initial position? 20 meter. Then you will come up with y equals to y minus y naught. Equals to 10t. Minus 4. 905t squared, and this is 20. You can see your vertical position is only function of time. Function of time equals to 20. This is approach one. We followed the initial definition, or you can directly replace your input value to this formula, yes? This is acceptable as well, yes? I don't do it, you can do it easily, check the same answer, because we don't have time. And find Okay, this is, okay, the highest, okay, the highest one, what was the condition for the highest, the V, we calculated VT was 10 minus 9.81T, yes, we calculated in the first part, part A. What was the condition for the highest vertical position? Vb equal to zero. Then t is equal to ten over nine units second. If I replace this time here. And here, this gives me the highest, yes, vertical distance. Do you agree? Which would be y max 
equals to 20, 10. I just replace time by this. Multiply by 1. Minus 4905. Units. 25.1. Do you agree? If you understood the concept, the principle, you can solve much more complicated. You need just to do practice. For this course, I emphasize again, it's different from structures. You need to practice more and more. And I provide you as many as examples you want through the practical quizzes and supplementary videos. Okay. Then the ball was like this. Here, the yt we calculated was 20 plus 10 multiplied by t. Minus. Okay. If I want to calculate the time that the ball impacts ground, what's the condition here? Do you agree based on the chosen coordinate system my y is equal to zero? If you have different coordinate system, you may have non-zero value, but it doesn't make then I put this one zero. If you put zero, you have two solution minus unit. Don't forget unit. Which one is acceptable? In Newtonian mechanic or Galilean mechanic, time is always positive. But in Einstein relativistic mechanic, you can have negative. Any question? Last part. Okay. So far, we look at everything as constant acceleration. But in some example, you have non-constant acceleration. You have different cases. Acceleration can be function of time, can be function of velocity, like the drag force when you have drag force, and function of height or distance. Can you give me an example when acceleration is function of distance? Gravity, when you are not close enough to the Earth's surface. I go through one of them. I go first mathematically through it, which is not examinable definitely, and solve one example. For other two cases, when acceleration is function of velocity and distance, I uploaded supplementary video, which is important. Please go through it. You need for exam. And I apologize, because I want to focus on examples during the lecture, I have to upload something extra, yes? Just to help you, you know, for me it doesn't matter, I can just... Okay, first we go through the mathematics. When acceleration is not constant anymore, for example, is a function of time. If I take... A dt equal to dv, and I take integration with respect to time equals to dv. 
it will be a lot then. Can I take acceleration out of this integration? Not anymore, yes? But what I know, I know because acceleration is a function of time, Ft, If you integrate some function, which is a function of time with respect to time, the outcome again is, the output is function of time, but another function. We call it gt. This g doesn't relate to gravity. It's just a symbol I use. You can't put L or whatever. And this is fundamental theorem of calculus, v minus v naught. Then, V equals to V naught plus G T. For different examples, you have different function of time. We will see it's one example after this. And now I want to calculate. Here I calculated the velocity to be able to predict or analyze the motion of objects. We need three main physical parameters. Acceleration, yes, which is given, yes. Velocity, and after velocity, position, yes. Again, because it's not function of, it's not constant acceleration anymore, I'm not allowed to use those three, form, four formulation, yes. I follow initial definition. V is equal to this one. Integration both sides with respect to time. No, sorry, this is not general integration, not with respect to time. This side gives you S minus S naught. V not T plus G T D T. Again, this is when you integrate the function of time with respect to time, you come up with different function of time, combination of another function of time, because V naught is a constant, yes? Initial velocity is always constant. The whole thing would be Function of time, qt. Then s equals to s naught, qt. Okay, this is general approach. Then we have three physical parameters. Acceleration, given speed or velocity, magnitude as a function of time, and the position of the object as a function. Yes? Then, the conclusion, when your acceleration is not constant anymore, we have to follow initial definition. Because for initial definition, we didn't make any pre-assumption. We developed for general case. To make it clear, if you want, you can ignore completely these mathematical things, and you can understand completely here what we mean by non-constant acceleration. Please read this example for one minute, then we solve it together. This is the final example. Do you have any lecture after this? I go quickly through it, just five minutes, then we go quickly. Okay, first of all, it asks approximate the velocity of the object at two different times. Yes? And this acceleration is given as a function of time. Is it constant or not? You have different values. You can see how easily you can follow initial definition and calculate them. First of all, this is deceleration. Deceleration is opposite or antonym of acceleration. Do you agree? What I am, I want, for me, is easier to deal with Acceleration, yes, because my definition of, I need just multiply this one by 
minus 1. Yes? Then I will have acceleration. Yes? AT is a piece Florence function. This is acceleration, AT. Is zero for this region, two, four. It's minus four G here. When time is between zero and two seconds, can you drive this line equation? You can easily drive it, yes? Because you have coordinate of this point is two and zero, and coordinate of this point is four and four mi minus four g. You can check it. I have here the equation g t minus two. This is the equation of this line when time is between two and four seconds, minus four g constant, when my time is four and six seconds, zero, when time is six and eight seconds. Because the acceleration is not constant, I want to follow the initial definition. This is the initial definition. It gives me first part of the question asked for Time equal four second. Yes? Then I put here what's the initial velocity of the object? Okay, because I have piecewise equation, I have to divide this integration in two parts, yes? Zero to two, yes? Which I know its expression is zero. dt plus two to four. What's the a for this region? Zero, yes? For this region? is this line equation. Then if you replace it, you will come up with, I just write the final answer for you. Okay, final answer. It's six meter per second. Is it clear? For the next part is exactly the same thing. It asks for the V at which time? Eight. A D T. Again you have to you need V one is given hundred self to two D T plus self to four D T plus four to six D T plus six to eight D T. In this region is zero, in this region is zero. Here is the line equation, my 
two, yes. Thank you. Uh, minus two G T minus two. Here minus four G. If you do all the calculation at T equals to eight seconds, approximately is equal to minus. You see by increasing the time your velocity from positive became negative. You have to change or decrease. Why? Because you have deceleration. At the beginning, do you remember? Deceleration was given. Unit, don't forget unit. Thanks a lot. Um, the other two, please look at the supplementary video. It's very important for the other two options. Exactly the same thing. If you face any problem, let me know, please. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next week. Yes? There is, where is your next lecture? Here. Oh, then we have time. <laughs> I thought you have to go. What's the next lecture? Oh, magnified. with you. Can you go? I will be out for you. Thank you. Thanks a lot Have for a nice weekend. Thank you.